<laughs> the following interview was conducted with Jane Baring for the Broody University Oral History Program. It took place on Tuesday, April the 10th, 2007, in Dr. Baring's office in the Purdue Memorial Center. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Librarian. Welcome. Good Thank afternoon. You. Let's talk about a little bit about your education, or first of all, where you were born and your parents and early life and move into education. Well, I was born in uh, one of the suburbs of Pittsburgh, East End, and uh, life was very simple. Uh, it was after the Depression, because I was born in 34, and uh, my mother's mother plus her aunt lived with us. My father was a saint, <laughs> having the two ladies. But that's, I think, has affected how I have related all these years to, to the retired group of people, because I grew up with them, and they were very special, and they were a part of my life. Um, life was simple. I went to school. I w Pittsburgh was a wonderful place to grow up because it had a lot of music. Uh, I was able to go by streetcar to take piano lessons. I was able to go uh, by streetcar down to Carnegie Institute where I had a scholarship to go to art school, the Tam Shanner program they call it, uh, starting in fifth grade until I graduated from high school. So every Saturday morning, I had a chance to do that. Uh, a lot of a lot of culture was available very easily, and and really for next to no expense. Mm -hmm. Do you have any brothers? Or any siblings? I have one sister who's two years older, mm -hmm. and she lives in Virginia now. Uh, they used to live in Chambersburg. It was through my older sister Betty and her husband that I happened to meet, Steve, the very first day I went to college. Okay. Let's back up a little bit. Would you go to grade school, close in grade school and high school, where you're right near where you lived? And we walked both to, to grade school, which was very close, uh, a small school that was even smaller, so we had first and second grade together, third and fourth and fifth and sixth. So I learned how to concentrate with noise going on because we would be doing written work while the other class was oral and vice versa. Mm -hmm. and, then, uh, and then I graduated from Smithville High School in 51 small classes, 135 in my class graduated in high school. And it was about a, a mile walk to go to junior high school and senior high school. Any particular clubs in high school that you joined, or athletics, or anything? Oh, special? I accompanied the choir, and uh, when I was in high school, I started taking uh, clarinet lessons so I could be in the marching band to go to the football games. In and high school, uh, high in high school, when I graduated from high school, I sold the clarinet and bought a typewriter, <laughs> which I used while I was in college. Everybody needed one. Where did you go to college? Tell us a little bit University about. of Pittsburgh. Okay. Now you and as I say, at Pitt, the very first day I went to school, when I was meeting my sister for lunch, Steve happened to be with him because he and Jim were both pre-meds. Okay. Interesting. Small world, right? Right. Did you live on campus? Uh, uh, no. On? Very few people lived on campus when University we were at the University of Pittsburgh. Downtown? It's yeah. in Oakland, which is out from downtown, but it is still uh, with it's, it's within the city limits. Within the city limits, okay. And so most people in those days went by by streetcar, literally. Mm -hmm. What was the uh, what, any clubs or tell us a little bit about what, any professors that you recall, and what was your major in college? Major in college was political science and economics, with a an emphasis in the Far East. Uh, marvelous, marvelous program. Dr. Jim Liu, who was the professor in Chinese history and, China, and oversaw this international program, was just a jewel. Good. Good. 
Were you in any clubs as well at uh, in college? At all? Oh my, yes. <laughs> any, partic any particular one? That you well, uh, University of Pittsburgh has nationality rooms, and uh, I was a hostess in the nationality rooms and at Heinz Memorial Chapel, which is across the campus a little bit from the Cathedral of Learning. Uh, I was very active in. I belong to all of the history, political science, and economics honoraries. Steve was in all of the science ones. But because my sister was majoring in science, I stayed away from it. And I think that was probably a, an immature reaction because I was so similar to her, I didn't want to be following in her footsteps exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but you met you, you knew him all through when you were in college, then. I knew him, but I didn't see him very often, and we didn't start dating until he was a senior and I was a junior. Oh, okay, okay, sounds good. Uh, but I was active. I was vice president of student government. Uh, what were the hot? Tell us a little bit. Were the hospitality rooms for the researchers? If they see this, what was a hospitality room that said there were many and you were the hostess for Well, them? these are, are classrooms okay. that were established. Pittsburgh is a melting pot because of all of the ethnic people who came in from all over to work in the steel mills. And so there is a Polish room and a Czechoslovakian room. Uh, my father helped found on, the, on, on the English and these, this is in the first floor and now also some in the third floor of the Cathedral of Learning, mm -hmm. which is that 42-story tower, which is the center of campus. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, active classes are held. Now the Chinese one had a big round table in it, so it was a smaller classroom. But each nationality room was put together with a committee of those people who had the background from Poland or Lithuania or Japan or wherever. And uh, it, it's, they're just magnificent. And then they work together with people in their home countries so that they have authentic art and authentic, authentic design. Mm. And are they still using those? Oh my, yes. yes. In fact, so, they've added on to them in these last few years. Very nice. And people from the community also could come. And they have, each room has a, com has a committee that keeps these rooms up. Very nice. They will have, oh, at Christmas time, they'll each will celebrate how they celebrate Christmas in their home countries. Oh, and they sort of have an open house and people could it's come. It's just one, I mean, anybody can come. Sure. They, they only have them open, though, if they aren't having a class in session. So classes are actually held in the so rooms? So actual classes are held there. Very nice. That's good. Okay, now having got your degree, what was the career path? What was the next thing? Well, when I graduated, I took the job in Washington with Central Intelligence. And because my forte was in the Far East, uh, I was working in that area. And it really is analysis of data. And uh, I did that until I went back to Pittsburgh after my father died and Steve and I got married. Okay. How did you like living in Washington at that time? Did you live in Maryland or Virginia? I lived in, uh, in the district. My father had roomed when he came over from England originally in the early 20s. He roomed with a man who was a patent attorney with the Interior Department. And they, I stayed with them for the first few weeks until I found a place. Mm -hmm. And then they were kind of my family in, in, in Washington. Washington. Very nice. And uh, I always had, uh, I went to the, to met them at church and then I would go home and spend Sundays with them. Very nice. One weekend a month I tried to either fly or take B&O Railroad to Pittsburgh, 
because that gave me a chance to see Steve. Steve had come into my life that last year and uh, it was obvious that I was not going to be doing long term and I think that's probably why I took the job I did rather than going into foreign service. Was he in medical school at that time? He was in medical school and uh, the first year I was a senior and he was in medical school. The next year I took a lot by correspondence. <laughs> <laughs> and I still have all the letters he wrote. I, I, someday I'll sit down and reread them and That's enjoy them. <laughs> That's right. As much as you did when you right. got them, right. But then when you finished and you were working there and then you got married and then what was the next? Was it well, I, when you finished? I worked uh, for, uh, for you, uh, no, I worked for Union Switch and Signal in the summers when I was in school. I worked for uh, Mine Safety Appliance Company in their international division. Is this in Pittsburgh? In Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. And uh, I stayed with them as long as Steve was in medical school. And then I quite literally retired from working for salary. I always have worked, but I've never, by that time I was able to, uh, to give time to places where I could, where they could use what I could offer. Yeah. Were any of your children born in, in uh, Pittsburgh at all? No children were born in Pittsburgh. They were all born in San Antonio. Oh, okay. So then the next step, I guess, would have been to Texas, right? Before? No. Well, from Pittsburgh, we went to, to Washington oh. because Steve was at Walter Reed. Oh, okay. And then from Walter Reed, we went to Wilford Hall, which was the big Air Force referral center. This was at a time where Barry Plan, where everyone spent two years in the military, and the difference was that we were very poor, and he was sponsored his junior and senior year, so we owed them money. We owed them time back. Mm -hmm. So I see. So we actually stayed in the Air Force for for ten years beyond medical school. Oh. And when most of that time was in was in, in San Antonio, and that's where he got to know. The, he worked with the the NASA. Program. That's where he worked with the early early first first astronauts. Right. Yeah. And that's where all the children arrived. Okay. And that's where you sort of got to know a lot of the the people too, as well, the astronauts. When you were there. Well, was there any I didn't. I didn't meet any of the astronauts until we came into okay. into the Purdue experience. Okay. Okay. Um, I was a military wife, and uh, I was raising little boys. Keeping busy. <laughs> Showing them the treats there, right. And then, I, well, tell us a little bit about, then you came from there to, the next step would be at, at Indiana University. Well, or was there Wilford group? Hall, no, that, that we came from San Antonio mm -hmm. to Indianapolis. What was Wilford, what was that like, though? Was that a Oh, it was a base? big, beautiful, beautiful hospital on, on Lackland Air Force Base. Uh -huh. And uh, that was a real learning experience for me. Uh, what? Growing up in a teetotaling environment at home, uh, every time you got promoted, you hosted a cocktail party. Well, I learned how to do cocktail parties, which I'd never come across before. <laughs> so there were a lot of positive things that we learned there that actually we were able to translate into use when we were in Indianapolis and up here. Okay. Interesting. Because uh, things like receiving lines, they every January they would have a, a formal receiving line where everyone who was stationed would be would go to meet the presiding general. Interesting. A little bit like West Point or the military academies, they're ball. Yes, I mean, it's a very, very formal. Very formal. Very yeah. formal. Mm -hmm. Like many of the dances and ROTCs and things that they used to have, you know, right. in the military. Yeah. Interesting. But learning, uh, you know, every, everything, every stage in life was a learning experience, which was very helpful. That's a good thing to have and, and to appreciate and, and be able to capture on it, I think. Yeah. So we had a very, very pleasant time uh, when Steve was chairman, was head of internal medicine there. We were working, I mean, we had residents and 
we had interns and it was a lot of interactivity with a lot of the other physicians and and their wives mm -hmm. Did you did you did you not live on the base or did you No, well, the base housing wasn't available there when we happened to arrive. And so we rented a place initially and then we bought a house in about uh, 20 miles from the Air Force okay. base. That's nice. That worked out nicely for mm -hmm. you. Okay. And then what was the did you leave you left there and came to We left there the, they have they had a tradition where the professors of medicine, the professors of medicine, the top ones, would come down and rotate and do rounds, teaching rounds. And so during that time we had a chance to get to know many of the major professors of medicine in the, from the academics. And when Dr. Hickam came down from Indiana University Medical Center. He was chairman of the Department of Medicine. Uh, he started talking to us about coming to Indianapolis to the university to join the medical school. And it was after that time that, uh, that we had to be careful we didn't want to be reassigned before we put the, res the resignation through. And so we were very quiet about what we were doing. But uh, Steve was able to do that. Mm -hmm. So they didn't promote him or reassign him, so he was locked. Let me ask you this, you're talking about the doctors. The physicians, what, where did they come, that were coming down there? If you clarify that, were they coming from IU or they came? Or well, from other schools? Would, Dr. Were, Hickam came from. from he came places. from uh, IU. Dr. Groman came from the University of Texas. From different places. So it was different locations, different medical centers, mm -hmm. and Wilfred Hall was a teaching hospital, okay. as was as and is uh, Walter Reed. Okay. That's and. Uh, marvelous experience because very ill people were being flown in from all around the world because that was the point of no return. I mean that was the ultimate in, in medicine practice. Mm -hmm. So you, he got, everybody got experience in that. So you rotated. had an enormous amount of very fine input from the best medical minds in the country. Who were down, who were coming down who there. Were coming at, every so often to to do rounds good. and teaching rounds. And that's how the contact was made with the... And that's the, how the contact happened to be made. And Steve took a leave and went up to look at Indianapolis at the medical center. And uh, when they decided to offer him the the job of a professor of medicine at the medical center, and then he, when we came, he was professor of medicine and assistant dean of medicine. Okay. What, and and then the next year he was associate dean, and two years later he was dean of the okay. medical. School. What was your uh, first impression? You'd never been to uh, Indianapolis or Indiana before. We'd driven you? through Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we were excited about the changes that were just beginning to come. Within the city, in the city, mm -hmm. uh, the the museums were coming online. Uh, it was a time of a lot of building and uh, cultural growth. Unigov, I think, probably came in about. Unigov was all, was in place. Right. Uh, we read the newspaper uh, the newspaper from Indianapolis. Oh, for some months before we moved because I was very pregnant with John, our youngest, and I was allowed one trip to Indiana. <laughs> and uh, so we had to do a lot of homework before I wrote to the Home Builders Association and uh, got the list of builders and found out where they had 
houses that were being built, neighborhoods. I mapped them on a, on a map as to where they were located, staying away from rivers, railroads. <laughs> I mean, I did a lot of homework before we moved. And you wonder when you think back on now, you do it by computer, but you were able to do it by <laughs> this way, which we all well, know. Well, yes, time. there weren't computers <laughs> then. <laughs> but not doing all this yeah, real estate right. stuff. <laughs> oh, so you were able to. So I did, I did a lot of reading the background of the city so that we really had a good feel for the city before we moved. Okay. Did you, uh, when you. Because as I say, I had a, when we moved, I, the boys were nine, seven, and John seven. was five weeks old. Oh, wow. <laughs> How was that one trip? Were you able to make a decision on that one trip that you. We had, had we whittled down as to the area and we had seen a couple of houses that were possible, but this was Easter weekend, and we were not leaving until the, until the 1st of July. Okay. So we had, to, we had to wait, and Steve came back, made a separate trip to choose the house. Okay. Good. But we had whittled down as to the neighborhood. So it, was, it worked out. So I didn't see the house that we moved into until we got here. Okay. Everything worked out then. Never, yeah. of course. Yes, that's right. But tell us, can you, um, what are some of the things that uh, the I were you involved in at the medical school did, when you became the dean? Did you work in contact with the students and the residents? And we, had, uh, we had student groups out at the house in the early days those were the days I cooked when we entertained. <laughs> I, ever since then, I've been a little spoiled. And then I was able to find a caterer that would come out and do the dinners. We always hosted a couple of the student groups. Okay. Uh, less student, I had less student interaction probably than, uh, certainly than we did at Purdue. Uh -huh. The circumstances were a little different. Uh, their schedules were different. Uh, we were living out and away from the campus. We did a lot of interacting with the administration at IU mm -hmm. because we represented the medical center. Steve was not only dean of the school, but he was director of the medical center. So really anything that happened regarding medicine in all over the state we were very much involved with okay. and he had already established the, the medical centers at Purdue and at Notre Dame and I was the gonna ask seven you centers so whether that was during his time that they were established that was his job oh. when he came was to see about at, trying to find out the, first the funding and then the the support for this to happen. Yeah. And he was, that was his job yeah. as assistant dean. I might ask and interject here uh, for the researchers who are going to be reading this, the centers, just clarify that a little bit so that somebody picking it up. Well, in so. seven different centers uh, in the major universities around the state of Indiana had originally first-year students and then some of them extended to second year. Mm -hmm. Then they would go back to Indianapolis campus for okay. the third year. Okay. But uh, this was something that had been tried. He, that's where he got to know Dr. Hovde, Dr. Fred Andrews. Uh, in conjunction with the In the conjunction with setting, setting up the program mm -hmm. at Purdue. Right. And they still and they're still going on. Oh yeah, researchers very research, much right? so. Yeah. Well, then we have come to this, uh, Purdue. 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 Purdue was how did uh, was came? not expected. Was uh, in fact, I, I guess we did more pre-thinking and discussing about this one because it was leaving medicine completely. And. Uh, that takes, that's a lot of discussion. That was, that was a difficult decision. 
But we have both thought many times that it was the most oh, fulfilling period of our lives. I mean, we really both thoroughly enjoyed what we were doing here. Mm -hmm. uh, I've often summed up the medical school years as view from the dais because those dinners were always with a head table that was strewn out. And when we got to Purdue, that really was the same thing. And little by little by little by little, we were able to change that so that it wasn't quite so much of it because uh, it was uh, more yeah. challenging sitting up looking at the audience. Yeah. Were your children, uh, the, uh, John I know went here, but your other son, all three children? Oh no, our oh. oldest son uh, is a lawyer from Indianapolis, from IU. Mm -hmm. He went to undergraduate, it was normal. Steve was at the medical school. Uh, actually we got tuition rebate because of, mm -hmm. of the fact that we were on the faculty. and. We really were not uh, particularly wealthy enough to to pick and choose. We were very happy to have the help. The help he went down to Bloomington. And then so he was in Bloomington undergraduate, and then he went to law school in Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. um, David was halfway through electrical engineering at Purdue, at Purdue when we were when we came. In fact, his father told him that when he told him what had happened, he said, when you graduate, there are going to be two bearings on your diploma. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we're at Westwood. Let's talk a little bit about that. And I know you saw that having the chief of protocol, you run a lot of things with your husband. So Westwood, did you have to make any changes when you came? Oh yes. Well, we had already established the Dean's Council giving group at the, at the medical school and so we had been doing a lot of entertaining of different groups in Indianapolis and we wanted to do the same when we, when we came. I think initially what we were doing was learning about Purdue getting to know the people. Uh, I didn't meet anyone until they invited, the trustees invited us for dinner. Now Steve had met all of the trustees. This is before? Before we came. Okay. But that night that we came up, in a very icy night, uh, was the first time I met any of these people that he had been meeting with. In conjunction with the right. presidency right. Right, opening. So that was my first visit to, to Westwood. It's a very small house. It was. Right. Uh, we did have dinner in the, di in the uh, living room at tables. And then there was discussion afterwards. Uh, I guess I passed because I had joked with him that if if they didn't offer him the job after meeting me, it would have meant I flunked. <laughs> because we'd gotten that far, he had gotten that far, but nobody had met me. Uh, the, uh, we had, of course, David living on campus in Triangle, and we still had a 14-year-old son at home. Who was in high school. Been was in, high school. in uh, well, he went to Klondike one year, and then he went to Harrison. Okay. But it was, um, we had to use the whole house, and I think that's what we did. We made Westwood our home where we did a lot of entertaining. Um, fortunately, not a whole lot had been done to keep it up. so. I, we were able to do some renovating, which was helpful. Uh, we went taupe. We got rid of the avocado, green, and tomato, and uh, went into the earth tones. 
and more practical wallpaper that didn't fray. And uh, so it really very much became our home. Everything that hung on the walls belonged to us. So our, our art, uh, it was, it was, it felt like home. Uh, they did add the breakfast room area off the kitchen when we before we arrived. That area that's in the back. Part it's there? Uh, no, oh. it's uh, it, it's uh, an extension of the kitchen that has windows, actually on the three sides. Okay. It has the bay, the bay area right. that sticks out. Over into over the bed that looks over by the garage. Okay. Did you because we had, as I say, we had family that was eating there. Sure. Uh, David stayed on, at Triangle, and we had John at home. Right. Uh, he was. Uh, I think that first year was difficult for him because he had no friends. And we moved in the middle of summer. So except for uh, the Batingers who had a son his age, and they were up in Sugar Hill, he, was, he had no close friends. Uh, he made lots of friends and went on to Harrison. I think we could have sent him to West Side, but we thought it was maybe healthy for him to go to school with some of the kids whose parents didn't care what what we did. Good point, yeah. Let's now, let's talk a little bit about some athletics. You've been pretty much involved with health sporting going. Both of you go to that. And uh, I know Dr. Bering said on his tape that you all you knew we were going to make it that year. Oh, the women right. had such little support in those early days. Yes. And we had had uh, a lot of the teams at the house. From the different athletics? From the different, well, for, volleyball sure. and the early, I mean, Ruth Jones, oh, yeah. uh, the first time, I mean, all of, the, all of those teams, every year we would have at the house. Uh, the, we only had the football team once, and that was after we built the patio cover. Uh, and that was an idea I picked up at the University of Pittsburgh because they had a, a tent over their patio and I came back and I said I have the solution how we can seat people and entertain larger groups because there was a limited number of people we could serve with um, in the dining room or well or other 12 tables. people in the dining room or we could uh, with lap trays they could eat around through the living rooms, but it was really not a whole lot of space. So we, I, I went down to Evansville with Jean Hatke, who was the university architect, and we met with at Anchor T Tent Nonning Company. And what we ended up with was structural steel beams, not just the poles that they had their tents up with structural steel, steel beams and then they built the tent with mesh in, and canvas sides so that it, it could be totally enclosed to keep insects out. It had the cover on the top so it kept moisture out and then we had rolled down outside canvas that we could put down in winter to snug it up a little. So up until about November we could use that space and then again starting maybe March because we had we had tried so many other things out on the patio and it was a limited space and of course if the weather was lousy we had to do it inside. Mm -hmm. So uh, that made all sorts of possibilities because then we could have the larger groups. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, they are, we were hoping to get a, a space where the University Senate could come for dinner with their spouses, uh, where a lot of the larger groups. The day, the night we had the football team, we borrowed the plates from the training table because they're long, big. It's like platters. Okay. And we had special food, so we put in a, a football factor in the, in the quantity. <laughs> it was great fun. <laughs> But the the athletics, you and you went. Both of you went to a lot of the. We went to the all home. of the home games. Uh, we traveled with them to a certain extent, where it was possible. But it, there were many, 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 many demands on time. Right. We met. We did about twenty five alumni meetings a year that we would attend out of town. The first year it was in this first year, probably two years, we were in the state, and then we would go any place that we could go and come back at night. And then it was longer trips as the as the children got older. Mm -hmm. But that particular year that we won, you really and I know Dr. Brown oh, said I was you out. Got, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I you was mentioned this on this interview. And it, when it came to after season playing, I, I would go with the women and he would go with the men and then he would join me with the women if <laughs> if the men dropped out before the women or vice versa. <laughs> but that year was our was the women's year. Oh, that was that was really thrilling. It was very exciting. Yeah. Very thrilling. Yeah. But as I say we had gotten to know all these all these girls. Yes. And they do These a wonderful, women, excuse me. They do a wonderful job. Yeah, and they did pretty well this year, right? They did. So. Oh, we haven't forgotten. We just find it more difficult now to drive at night. Yeah, right. Uh, we're not doing nearly as much of that. So yeah. we had we gave up. We had to give up the f basketball games. Yeah. Do you still come for the football though? We come for football. Oh, yeah. Okay. Don't sure. miss. Don't we? Don't miss the football <laughs> games. But. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we catch on television any anyone, so we have a chance to. Yeah. Now with athletics, with the students, you've been really interacting a lot with the students. Were you ever a fact fellow by any chance at any of the? Uh, no, no, I couldn't be. Mm. Uh, and I think that was because of the time limitations. Sure. But you had the students. Your a lot of your interaction would have been at at, the, at Westwood. Oh yes, yeah. we had lots and of students. And functions on campus. I mean, organizations. I mean, it, we. Huge. We tried increasingly, and that was, I think we proved the need for the extra space, which was important because when we did the addition, this was not a, a should we, we had either had to replace the canvas because we'd worn out the canvas by that stage. Right. So we either had to replace the canvas and the trustees decided that the time had come that we could. Indeed. And that was the time they did the other renovation. And that's when we did the big renovation. Right. And that's when I literally sat down with architects and we went through every detail so that the house would be handicapped accessible from top to bottom, so that it was totally functional, so that the storage and the, and the cooking and the the place to store tables off the the big octagonal room, but I wanted to to keep the ambience that we'd found outside, which was so wonderful, mm -hmm. and it's such a gorgeous, gorgeous spot. It is. So yes. that uh, that's how it ended. <laughs> okay, good. good. Um, this, the Stephen Bering scholarships and the Bering scholarship. Both of you are really involved in. Well, and, that, and uh, uh, that's another interaction with the students. Steve, probably more so than I have been, just because that was his project, it was his thing. Uh, I tend to support anything that he has done. Sure. Uh, but you get, you've gotten to know the, 
But uh, we would get to know, sure. oh, obviously, yes, yeah, right. we would get to know the students. Uh, interestingly, when our granddaughter came up for her day on campus visit yesterday, she had a chance to have lunch with one of the Beering Scholars, nice. which was kind of like going completely around the circle. It came sure. around again. It was Very delightful. Good. She had a wonderful time. Oh, yes. It was perfect. Yeah. The um, but sometimes well, I know Dr. Baring said this that you keep they keep in touch with you oftentimes after they leave. Well, we we still hear from oh, that's nice from from several of them. Right, the and ones we got to know the early ones. Of course, there were fewer of them, and we had a chance to get to know them more. Right. Yeah. Uh, let's talk a little bit about now. The diversity has really increased increased a lot since Dr. Baring came, and even beyond too, and. Well, those yeah. were his program. I mean, uh -huh. he was involved. We, I grew up. We grew up in Pittsburgh, where literally we were colorblind. So uh, there wasn't any question about about any race, any anything, right. because we grew up in Pittsburgh. Right. I understand. Right. Um, I have somewhat the same. Cleveland was very similar. Right. Yeah, right. And with the steel, I understand that. Um, how about a little bit about fundraising? That's, uh, you got to know the, the alumni and things of that well, sort? Well, I, I kind, kind of looked at my role as friend raising. Um, by sheer fluke, I backed into taking photographs of alumni on Good. the road. And you knew I was going to ask about that. Okay. Well, photographs are really, I guess, more Purdue people remember me because of photographs because I probably have 100,000 of them in my database. Wow. Um, I would take pictures of people with Steve. I would take pictures of them. I would take but not everybody. I mean, it was kind of a random thing. I learned while we were still at the medical center not to work rooms. And I went to a building dedication and came across an official who was talking to the next person while he was still hanging onto my hand. And I thought, that's negative. So I made it a point not to work rooms. <laughs> but I would talk to a few people and I would add them to my collection of special Purdue people. And then when I got home and took the film to Barry's to be processed, I, if they were good photographs and if they were complimentary I, of the people, I would send it with a note. So it gave me a conduit to communicate. And these people were never strangers again. Right. You have to remember them. Have to, uh, the well, names. I have that kind of a memory. Good. I mean, I, rem I have a photographic memory, quite literally. That's very needed. So I recognize people. Now, I, these days, as I've gotten older, I have a little trouble putting both front and last names together some days. <laughs> we all have that. <laughs> but it was, it was a wonderful way to get to know the people mm -hmm. because it was positive re -edit. I had to. And uh, that, was, that was, as I say, I had not planned to do this. It was strictly, uh, I backed into it by taking the camera to on, the, on, a, on one of the Florida trips, and I had a couple that were unique, Arby Stewart and Steve. Oh, I mean, there were some priceless ones. Right. And so uh, when I heard back from some of these people, I thought there's something happening here that I couldn't quite define, but I knew that it was important. It's a nice way. And I had a front row seat so many places. Yeah. 
Did you change the type of camera that you were using? I imagine. Oh you yes. Would, yeah. When we went in 1986, we went, did our first President's Council trip, and we did the cruise to Alaska. And uh, th that's when we bought my first, as I called it, big boy camera. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what was uh, the big boy camera? <laughs> and from then on, it just it just kept getting better and better as the equipment became possible. And uh, I can't you, say enough good things about Barry's camera shop here. <laughs> what are you doing with your database these days? Are you still keeping it up, or? Well, uh, not exactly. Oh. Uh, I have. All of the negatives from all of these years at Purdue that are in slip sheets by event and date. Now the library had started a project. I had digitized, for two years I digitized, those last two years we were on campus. I had started working on it and would transfer them to a database at, at the library only the library changed people who were handling their database and the photographs disappeared and so I decided that my I, it would take all the rest of my life oh, yeah. Working size. to to get this done. I mean, the library had hired a young student after we had retired to work on the project. And uh, when I learned that they had destroyed two years' worth of work, I uh, decided that enough was enough. So I cut it. Yeah. I hated to do it to Carl Snow. But you're still keeping it at home, you've got it. I, I keep it on the computer because sure. I've gone digital. Sure. Uh, I burn, burn CDs and DVDs, but uh, back, I mean, these, most of the photographs I'm taking now, unless we're traveling, if we're traveling with a group, I still take pictures. Mm -hmm. I do not bring a camera to Purdue when we come to events here. Because I'm no longer okay. doing what I was doing before. Sure, that's okay. Well, you've had enough anyway. I mean, so. it really, uh, well, it's not appropriate at this stage. Yeah. But uh, I, I have wonderful memories because of getting to know the people so well. It's a nice way to do that. And they're friends all over the world. Right. It, it just, it's that personal touch that you never lose, t lose touch with, which mm -hmm. is really nice. I want to talk about a little bit about some of the uh, special things you got. How about the honorary doctorate? Was that kind of that? Did, did oh, that, I was you, really touched. Did you have a little glimmer on that or not? No, oh. I, they. I had no idea this was going to happen. Uh, I I thought perhaps where they put it was appropriate because little by little by little we had been able to make changes in the food to help. We, we first hired Chef Schmieder and now uh, Chef Carl. And uh, there were no chefs when we first came. Uh, the Union Foods people took me to the trade show in Chicago every summer and I took them to lunch down in Indianapolis at some of the places like the Country Club, a Latour restaurant, which was uh, Peck, Wolfgang Peck's mm -hmm. restaurant, mm -hmm. uh, to show them presentation of what product, because I did all of the meal planning, sent out invitations, sent, I mean, we, I had no help in the early days. I had one housekeeper. Wow. So that uh, it was a it was a do-it-yourself project, but I wanted it to be more personalized than the white-paneled invitations. 
So every invitation that Steve and I sent out, we handled. Um, anything involving President's Council, they handled. And anything university, uh, we, we little by little absorbed all of it into the dean's office so that new faculty and staff receptions, that all came out of the office. And that way we were able to include, I mean, to separate the units instead of inviting everybody at the same time. Sure. And that was, I just noticed the first year that they were all queued up all the way down the driveway and the mosquitoes bite in in August. <laughs> yes, I know. Sometimes they come And earlier. if it was raining, it was a problem. So we would stagger the invitations and, uh, and let the deans of the schools and have it, everybody from that one unit at the same time so they could have a chance, the new people would have a chance to meet the older ones. Right. Very workable. So, uh, yeah, very workable. Yeah, so hospitality, uh, we really paid attention to. Uh, and the new room, of course, was incredibly helpful. Right. So we could seat 100 and some right. people. Yeah. We got a couple others that I think that's nice the uh, the academic learning for student athletics for the Jane Frey. That's very oh, nice. Oh, I was really touched. We uh, tell I say when I that. traveled with a women uh, basketball team and saw that they go to to these learn academic learning centers when they're visiting at another school. I had no idea that they had that kind of support. But it was wonderful because they didn't fall behind. In the case, in the case of the playoffs, sure. when they would be there for several days. Tell, elaborate on that. They would go. To, uh, how would they go about? They would continue their studies while they were. Well, they playing? have have Learn? tutors. Oh. Uh, I mean, they they do have people that work with them. Mm -hmm. Here so on campus as well. On campus and. And they had the facilities at the other schools so that they could make use of the facilities when they were on the road. Very, Very nice. helpful. Very nice. Yeah. But that, that's a nice, that, how did they, uh, t did they tell you about that? Well, that was at the last Mollenkopf. Oh, Mollenkopf was fun. Uh, all of a sudden, I was taking the foursomes at Mollenkopf. <laughs> <laughs> which was really fun. I would take the foursomes, which is normal. I mean, they're used to, all the golfers are used to having a foursome picture. Right. Uh, and then I would take what I called PS pictures, which would be a more casual shot of each of the golfers. And then I would send them both to them. <laughs> but uh, it gave me an opportunity to get to know that group of people. And uh, now the first time I think they wondered what I was doing there. <laughs> but then they would get to the point where they'd say, somebody would say, suck it up, fellas, here she comes. <laughs> Go to that photo lady, right? Yeah. Well, there are a couple other things. That joint resolution that uh, the Indiana legislature didn't compliment to you and, and Dr. Baring, that uh, Ron Alting, you were down there for that, that joint resolution, oh, yes. down mm -hmm. both of you. Mm -hmm. that, that must have that been was fair enough. Yeah. Yes. Was that kind of a surprise as well? All of the all, well, tell us what, all of the honors were great. surprises because you know we never did anything because I know. because of it, I know. I know. Uh, and so when it was when things were winding down, a lot of people wanted to say thank you, and we had been there here for seventeen years. Uh, it's I mean nice they were really do. our family uh, because we. Days, nights, and weekends we spent with some branch of the family. <laughs> <laughs> and now you can drive along bearing drive. Our children were all allowed to get married either at Christmas or Thanksgiving vacations <laughs> if they wanted to have parents. Uh, 
two of them were married on the same day, on the Thanksgiving break. On the same but, day, exactly? It, yes, five oh. years apart. Oh. But our, when David and Donna got married, we were playing football on that Saturday. <laughs> so we couldn't have a wedding. So uh, they got married on the 22nd of December. <laughs> and fortunately, each couple was very cooperative. <laughs> okay. Uh, the other, another one I wanted to ask you about, which that lovely seating area near the David Ross Memorial. Oh, well, that was, you know, the very the picture of that that was in the paper just touched me. I thought it was. It's lovely. Uh, that's a that's a, 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 a lot very of people don't even know. Uh, that's a very touching. That whole package. Uh, the very first year I was. We were here that Christmas. The women's club had a Christmas tea over in Cranard. And I was struck by the number of the retirees that were there. And it was a very icy day. And I thought, that's not a good idea to have all of these older women out when it's not safe underfoot. So we created the yearly coffee. <laughs> and of course, I'd been in Texas where we didn't do teas in Texas. We did a lot of entertaining. In the mornings, there were coffees. I don't think anybody that was invited the first year to coffee knew what to expect. <laughs> but most older people are more alert first thing in the day. And so from 10 until 12, we would have coffee. And uh, that gave that group of people a chance to see each other. It was a group that had given enormously in the past to the university of their time. Many projects, many, many, oh, they were enormously helpful to me. The Purdue Women's Club. The, well, and, and, the, the, and the retirees right. group. Uh, so every, every fall we had the retirees coffee so that that group had a chance to get to know each other and right. see each other. Right. Um, and I think that spins off from my growing up with my great aunt, my grandmother living with us. Mm -hmm. I knew their sensitivities and I knew that it was important to them. And I dearly loved getting to know them. When I come up now for a luncheon, I sit with some of the retirees. That's nice. Um, the ret when we built the addition on Westwood, I, uh, we were at, a, at some dinner or a luncheon, and one of the retired male faculty said, you know, my wife is always invited to Westwood, but I don't have a chance to come. I'd like to see it. And I said, We'll do it. So we had an ice cream social and invited the men as well as the women. <laughs> and uh, that gave them a chance to see the house and see the additions and see the changes. And uh, that was nice. Yeah, that was a, a fun group. Well, I think by the time we got finished, the retirees wanted to say thank you, and that's what they proposed. And there was the spot selected. And I did not know what it was going to look like until I saw it. Okay. And I was really touched. Yeah. Did you know that they were going to do it on your behalf? Or, or did you find well, out just when they had the somewhere along the way, probably, I heard about it. Mm -hmm. uh, now, what is not has never been published. But there is a place up there where the trustees 
have reserved a place so that that's where we will end up being buried. There's still space up there? Yes. Mm. I mean, it's already designated. Very good. But it is not for general publication. But I know people, when they read that, Jane, they said, I had no idea that he was, that that even existed, that David right. Ross, that that's what it was, right, until the, and they saw that. Well, David Ross is that whole area at the top. Right. I mean, people would go to the amphitheater and see on it, but down. Some people but, have never, either but not been up there or they wouldn't have had a chance to be up there. Right. I mean, they wouldn't have thought of being yeah. up there. They just didn't realize. They thought he was no. somewhere else, you know, kind of thing. But that's very nice. Um, and then, of course, I think it's nice with the with Bering Drive, and then the sculpture and Bering Hall. So you can all oh, kind well, of share there, yes. which is nice. Oh, yes. yes. I mean, it's it's one name that for all. Was, that was, and that was important to Steve, that that all of the university have an opportunity to grow. Right. And so it that was, building it was very, very nice. nice to be able to separate the two schools so it wasn't hissy. Right. Right. And, uh, and it blossomed. Yeah. The, you know, you were talking earlier about the President's Council. You've been, we, people were always pretty much involved, and you went on Very trips, much. and still are with Every the other year we would do the cruises. Right. And that was a wonderful way to get to know people better. But, I mean, when you only see them casually, or you see them for a few yes. moments here and there, it's hard to get to know them. Right. And that that present that allows it a little more, and you you interact and so you're we together. had we had downtime to be right. with people, right? Yeah, and that was that was just wonderful. The sadness at this stage is losing them. Yes, as as one as little by little, as right. we have aged, so have they. I understand. Uh, the local community were you did we on ever any of the boards at all in the oh, community? Or? Well, we. Like the economic or any of the oh, I I supported everything in the community that was cultural or social services. Okay. Steve has always taken care of education. Uh, I always took care of cultural, art, and Both and the social. Mm -hmm. So and I I do that today. Sure. Except we do it in Indianapolis. I think. Uh, I served on the board of the symphony and at the art museum. Um, I I really do believe in supporting the arts locally. I give to the Carmel Symphony every year, and I I really think about the Lafayette Symphony every time I do it. Yeah, because it's, I think it's important to support the. The cultural base of the, of the local the, community, of right? The local community, right? Yes. Hopefully, the art museum will move along. Then there's historical society, but you know, well, the historical the society I never got involved yeah. with, other than Some having the, been there. Sure. And yes, we always supported. Sure. I mean, we supported literally anything that had to do with art in the typical right. new area, right? And. Uh, and the same thing have you had a chance the social visit, services. Have you have a chance to visit Prophetstown yet? Have you been out there? Haven't now? been out since they did the renovations. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the developments. Development, right, yeah. With more to come and things of that sort. Well, let's see. Um, now, since your retirement, as I said in the paper, people share an office. Anything uh, you care to comment on that at all? What you're No, doing? I just try to keep, keep okay. up with... Uh, all of a sudden, I was back to uh, me, myself, and I, and I've had my hands full. <laughs> I've been trying in since retiring. I've really been very jealous of the time I have spent and where I'm spending it uh, since Steve retired. Uh, for one thing, when he was so ill, I had my hands more than full. But uh, I still communicate with people little by little. The Christmas card list has whittled down. <laughs> but that last year, there were you know, so many 
I mean, it was like 16,000 Christmas greetings that went out. Because I really do believe to, in saying thank you to people who have been helpful to the institution. And this was a world-class institution, which was why I felt so very strongly that we had to do things well and we had to do things correctly, right. which is where the protocol bit came in. Exactly. Right. Um, I have a book that uh, a woman who, who was married to an admiral in Washington uh, wrote, Pauline Innes, uh, served on the liaison committee for medical education that Steve chaired for 10 years while he was at the medical school. And she wrote the book on protocol. So uh, when President Carter came to the house for dinner, I had to know exactly where to seat him and where, I, where to seat the mayor and everybody else in the room. Mm -hmm. So we really tried very hard to maintain the standard that Purdue deserved because we shared so many alumni with so many schools. But the China, I got the idea from the University of Illinois because they had University of China and I looked at it and I thought, hmm, when Illinois graduates, special graduates eat at their home, they have special University of China we had no University of China. We do now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I tried to keep in mind those key things. What was, what this you know, I mean, what was important as to take from Purdue to the outside world. Right. Very good point. Um, any outstanding? Um, would you like to give us any outstanding event or a longest memory? I usually ask that. Or is there something that I didn't ask that you'd like to share oh, in wrapping up? We just had a, a, so many wonderful experiences with so many special people, and it's been fun in our afterlife now as we've been retired to see some of the the young people who were students in their new roles, like Andy Miller and his wife Tracy, who met at an r and initiation at our house. And he's now Secretary of Agriculture for the state. Oh, wonderful. Uh, nice. it, they're just a lot of, of wonderful experiences because of a lot of wonderful Purdue people. Mm -hmm. Good. So our, our life has been very richly blessed. That's right. Anything, any other special thing or is that kind of things that... Oh, highlights, I, how do you, I mean, President Reagan's visit to campus. Did you get a chance to, when Dr. Reagan, when Mr. Reagan, when Reagan was here, did you meet him? Oh, yes. Oh. Now, we did not have him at the house. Okay. That was very difficult because he was a sitting president and the security was enormous. Uh, but because uh, was President Carter was retired by okay. the time, right. I mean, he was out, out of office when right. he came. Right. Um, but Reagan, there was a reception for special people in, from Indiana where I had a chance to. Somewhere mm -hmm. in one of my memorabilia boxes, there's a photograph that someone took at the at the re that reception. Okay. But you did get a chance to meet President yes. Reagan when he came, yeah. I, and you're talking about security, I mean, they had everything locked down and, you know. Oh, it was, it was very difficult. Yeah, it was a, it was a real challenge. Yes. Uh, I even stood in line at Mackey, just, I read a book because I barely right. got, but I got in there, so it was kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah, very special. Yeah. I mean, there were, oh, as I say, there were so many, so many different Right. Different experiences. That's right. See now you'll put that in your, in your book. You have to do that. And no, I. Uh, well, we 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 joke about. Uh, as I say, I used to sum up medical school as view from the dais. Uh, Steve has al always said that because uh, I stopped to talk 
and visit with people that uh, his chapter on me is going to be, I thought she was right behind me. Because <laughs> he's usually ready to be out there and I'm still talking on the inside. Oh, anything else, Jane, or do you think this is going to, any, any wrap up or Oh, thing? I don't know. I mean, how do you wrap up 17 wrap up, years just, of, I know. of wonderful experiences with many people? You continue on with it, but you continue on. And uh, where it's possible, we've continued to react the relationships. Right. Um, I have so many friends right. that it's, it's really... Uh, it's very enriching. It was... It was Wonderful period of our lives. That's good, and it will it will always be that. It'll continue that way. That's right. I think we can close on that note. Great. Thank you very, mm -hmm. very much. My pleasure. Really nice.